So I've been using CapCut for a couple of weeks now and last week I put it to the real test. I used it to edit and color grade a cinematic travel sequence. This sequence. And I think it looks great, so I'm gonna show you how I did it. A quick CapCut tutorial. Speed ramps, music, sound effects, color grading, everything. I even used the touch of AI magic, because that's the hype at the moment, right? So yeah, let's do it. So CapCut is a free video editor for desktop or mobile. I downloaded it for my Mac. I've been using it for a few weeks now and it feels like what they're going for is being a video editor for creators who are looking for something that doesn't have such a steep learning curve like Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve. But the results look amazing. So let me just show you how I created that cinematic travel sequence. And look guys, that word cinematic, everything can be cinematic, okay? If I film an avocado in a way that looks cinematic to me, then it is cinematic. You know what I mean? And I don't care what anyone else says, but I do realize that what looks and feels cinematic to me might not look and feel cinematic to you. That's the reality and also the problem usually. In my opinion, the most important thing is just express yourself. The colors, the music, the compositions, just put something of yourself, of your personality in your work, some emotion, and it'll look cinematic. But anyway, let's just do some editing now. Okay, we're in CapCut. I've already arranged the clips in a way that I think it'll flow nicely once it's finished, but of course you can still switch and move clips along the way. I've also already dropped some music on my timeline, right here, and now let's start editing. And the first thing I want to show you is the speed ramp at the start of the video. So the video starts at normal speed, then it speeds up here, and then it goes back to normal speed. That's a speed ramp. Now how do you create one? Just click on the video clip and then up here go to speed and what you see here are the basic settings. Speed up or slow down the clip here, but to make a speed ramp we have to go here to the curves. And then you can use one of the presets if there's one you like, but I always use the custom settings so I can tweak and adjust the speed ramp so that it matches the pace of the music. And it's just a matter of adjusting the speed points here. So this is basically a visual representation of how your clip plays. If I drag this up here, it will speed up that part of the clip. If I drag it down, it will slow down that part. Now to create the speed ramp that I want, which is normal speed for the first part of the clip, then speed up the middle part and then at the end back to normal speed, I just need to drag the middle point up there. But what I want is more of the clip sped up. So what I'll do is I'll click here and add another speed point. And now it's just a matter of tweaking these points and listening to the music until your speed ramp matches the pace of the music. So this part of the clip is normal speed now. Here it starts speeding up. Then this is max speed and here it slows down again. And you can tweak it however you want. And the best way to learn how to create a nice speed ramp is by doing it. A lot. Start right now. Okay, and now let's do the main edit of our sequence. And it's not difficult. All I did is edit the clips to the beat of the music. That's it. And CapCut has a super cool feature to help you with that. It's called Auto Beats. So it uses AI to show you where the beats of your music track are. Now, you can do this in most editors these days, but CapCut makes it really easy. Basically just one click of a button. All you need to do is select your music track, hit this icon right here and select beat one or beat two. Beat two will just show you more beats and that's the one I usually use. Because of course you don't have to make a cut on every beat. And then it's just a matter of cutting and trimming all the clips to the beat. These yellow dots here. Every yellow dot is a beat.
and this is what the final result then looks like. And you see, you don't have to make cuts on every beat because then it'll feel too robotic. And where you make cuts? Well, that just depends on what you want to show, what you think feels good, what you think flows nicely. And then the next step is adding sound effects. It's just that little extra to take your video to the next level. What I did, first of all, is a whoosh effect where the speed ramp is, and it just makes the speed ramp feel a bit more dramatic, you know? And I also added some beach and ocean sounds throughout the whole sequence. You can do whatever you want. All you need to do is drop your sound effects on a new track under the music. And then you can play around with it until it sounds amazing. And then the cherry on top, of course, is color grading. Now, do you have to color grade? No, of course not. If you like the colors of your original footage, just leave it. But if you want, you can personalize it. You know what I mean? Make it look cinematic, add that little extra, that personality, that emotion. So what I did is, first of all, I applied one of the many filters that CapCut has. Go here to filters and then pick one you like. For this sequence, I chose Miami, then drop it onto the timeline, and you see it creates an adjustment clip for that filter. And all the clips that are under the adjustment clip will get the filter applied. You can make it longer or shorter. I want it applied to all my clips, so I just have to make sure that it covers all my clips. But I feel like it doesn't yet look like what I want it to look like. So now let's tweak the colors manually. You can do that here. Select the clip first and then go to adjustments here. In the basic tab, you can do the basic adjustments. I want it to look a bit warmer so I get more of that sunset vibe. So temperature, I'll drag it towards yellow. Maybe a bit more saturation also to make the colors pop. And then a bit more contrast, yeah. And maybe a tiny bit of illumination to emphasize that beautiful glow of the light. Okay, we're getting somewhere now. You can also sharpen or play around with the shadows and the highlights, add some vignettes, whatever you like. So it looks pretty good now, but let's take it one level up. I want to target some colors specifically. Now we're actually getting to the color grading part. So in the HSL tab, you can target colors specifically and change the hue, the saturation or the brightness. For example, what I did is increase the saturation of the yellows and the oranges to make that light pop. Not too much, because then it will look unnatural, just a little bit. There. And then in this tab here, the curves, there's four curves here. The first one is the brightness curve, and the first one affects the whole image. The bottom of the curve here is where the shadows are, these are the midtones in the middle, and these are the highlights at the top. And for example, if I pull down here at the bottom, it will darken the shadows in the image. If I drag it up, it will brighten the shadows. Let's drag it down for now, and I will do the opposite for the highlights. And that's how you can add contrast. Create an S-shaped curve. But of course, you can tweak every part of the image however you want. But for this video, I'm not gonna touch the first curve. I want to use the color curves. Now, the color curves work the same, but a little bit different. If in the red curve, for example, I drag down the shadows, what it does is take away red in the shadows and add the opposite color of red, which is teal. You see? And if I drag it up, it does the opposite. And you can do this for red, green, and blue. I'm only gonna use the blue one here. I don't want to touch the midtones, so I'm gonna lock them. Just click and make an anchor point. And then I want a bit more blue in the shadows, and that'll take away some of the yellow, the opposite color. And I'll do the same for the highlights. There. And that's just what I feel like, you know, there's no rules here. Just make sure that you don't overdo it, because then it'll look unnatural. And that's not what you want. You always want to keep a certain natural feel to your image, you know? But that's it, a quick CapCut tutorial. I actually like it. For people who don't want to spend hours to learn a complicated editor, CapCut seems like a very good option. Um, I hope you liked it, I hope it helps, and if you have any questions, just drop them in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, and see you in the next one.